Hello everybody and welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to another video, another video on the Coco and Sage ASMR chain. Today we are with the big doggy. So, the big chihuahua sage and we are going to be reading about chihuahuas on the american kennel club and i might also pull up wikipedia as well sage is another rescue he's about five years old he was one when we got him about four years ago And unlike Coco, Sage is not super picky about where he likes to get relaxed. So you can pretty much plop him down in any situation and he will he will fall asleep if that's the mood that you're setting for him. If he's getting sleepy vibes, he will probably be able to get comfortable. So I am reading about chihuahuas. If you guys like videos um, of just soft spoken or whispered talking, reading, because I do like to do a lot of reading, then this is definitely the channel for you because I personally love soft spoken ASMR videos with like, a lot of talking. I love, love, love good crinkles, good crinkles and just like traditional sounds too, but I definitely, definitely prefer videos with a lot of talking in the background and layered sounds and background noise and stuff like that. Speaking of which, I have my Maruchan Fox. Well, it's not Maruchan, Maruchan actually. It's Top Ramen. Its name is Wonder Boy. My boyfriend bought this for me. So I'm going to be holding on to this. As I'm reading. He likes he likes to lick his legs a lot and I don't think that it's good for him. I will be reading Huawei History from Aztec Treasure to Popular Companion off of American Kennel Club. Rottweilers, American Staffordshire Terriers, loving, loyal, ideal family pets. Yet, they are sometimes misunderstood, assumed to have traits that a good representative of their breed would not possess. So why is a story about the smallest of all AKC registered breeds talking about the big guys? His chihuahuas have also been subjected to a few undeserved misconceptions. These are not frail, yappy ankle biters who will only like to sit on your lap, says Kyle Potts. As president of the Chihuahua Club of America, she's been around enough of these little charmers to know. But even those new to the breed should be able to quickly assess for themselves that the Chihuahua is a stable, friendly, and healthy dog who isn't afraid of an agility tunnel or going along on the family camping trip. Even the Chihuahua's homeland is up for debate. Most likely a native of Mexico, 
Some experts in the breed have theorized that the Chihuahua may have been brought from the island of Malta by the Spanish conquistadors. Others speculate that the breed may have originated in China. Things get even stranger when we learn that early writing made wild claims such as the Chihuahua was not fully canine or that they were even related to chipmunks. In his colorful History of the Chihuahua, William Miller writes, We know that the Toltec people of Mexico kept a little dog known as the Techichi, which had a fat body and large Chihuahua-like ears. Chihuahua-like ears. When the Aztecs came into power, the nobility of that society owned little dogs. These dogs were more than just companion animals. This dog is believed to have been bred with Jolotz Quintley. The Mexican hairless dog who produced the Chihuahua as we know it today. As history and power would have it, the Toltec civilization gave way to the Aztec not by choice, during the 11th century. The Aztecs believed that when an Aztec noble would die, it was necessary to slay a chihuahua and bury or cremate it with the body of the human. They believed that the spirit of the dead chihuahua would act as a guide through the afterlife to the soul of the dead noble. The human spirit needed help swimming across a river into the afterlife and would crawl onto the back of the Chihuahua spirit to reach his heavenly destination in the afterlife. There is evidence that the nobility kept large packs of hundreds of dogs. Potts adds that they were almost a form of money and used in trading, but at some point the Chihuahua had the good fortune to become average, and most homes had one. By the 1800s, people in the U.S. began to take interest in the breed. In 1888, James Watson, an author and judge, purchased a female dog named Manzanita. Owen Wister, author of The Virginia, also imported a chihuahua named Carranza, which became the dog that produced the famous bloodlines, Maron and Perito. Surprisingly, most of the imports at this time were long coats, not the popular smooth coat, Sage. Are you cutie, Sage? Are you cutie? And some believe the long coats were bred out of Pomeranians or Papillons. This is not true, and in fact, the long haired is a true variety of the breed. That's right. That's what I'm saying. Approximately 20 years later, the AKC recognized the breed in 1904 with the first registered Chihuahua Midget owned by H. Rayner of Texas. Within a couple of years, the breed had its first champion, Beppy, owned by Miss L. A. McLean of New Jersey. The Chihuahua Club of America, founded in 1923, was created to develop a community of Chihuahua breeders and further the breed in the United States. The founders included Miss Henrietta Proctor Donnell, Ida H. Garrett, Alice Dobbs, Rose Clark, M. R. Muller, and Clara L. Dobbs. One of their most notable members included Helen Nowicki, a Chihuahua breeder among other breeds, 
and the editor of Dog World magazine. Billie Holiday was one of many celebrities in the U.S. to own and love chihuahuas. Miss Dobbs was instrumental in establishing the annual specialty show, which was first conducted on May 19, 1928, at the Queensboro Kennel Club show, with 42 dog entries, 14 males, and 28 females. In a few years, the club decided to hold their annual meeting and specialty to specialty show in Chicago indefinitely. This move created a more centralized meeting location for members and ultimately the breed's registration with the AKC grew from then on. Some of the earliest breeders included Miss Harry S. Peaster of Philadelphia, who owned the Lorex Doll Kennels. The kennel produced a record number of champions and provided the foundation stock for other well established dogs. La Oro Kennel, which produced national champions like C. H. I. C. Ora, Principe. C. H. Lai, Laoro Marinero, and others, was owned by legendary breeder Anna B. Vineyard, who served as president of CCA during the 1950s. Probably two of the most well-noted chihuahuas are C.H. Tejano, Texas Kid, who took a record 15 best in shows, and C.H. Holiday Gold Jubilee, who took 16 best in show and 81 toy glued firsts. C.H. Holiday Gold Jubilee, aka Doc Holiday, is also notable on account for his record as the first Chihuahua to be ranked as number one in the toy group in the United States. It took over 50 years before the long and smooth coats were exhibited at dog shows. In 1952, they were separated into two varieties, with the smooth coat the preferred variety as pets. One year prior to this, C. H. Adas Gretchen, a smooth coat chihuahua, won the first all breed best in show, a milestone for the breed. You guys notice the names that have C H C H H H H H before their name means that they hold a championship title. It's like this um, with certain disciplines in the equestrian world as well, such as saddle seat, you will find that a lot of saddlebred horses will have CH added to the front of their name, or WCH, which is World's Champion. And that is actually added, it's actually a title added to their name, and you cannot have CH in your dog's or your horse's name if they are not in fact a holder of that title. The famous band leader Xavier Cougat did much to popularize chihuahuas in the 1940s and 50s. Most recently, these natural performers stole the show in Beverly Hills Chihuahua, Legally Blonde, and Sex in the City. The minor league baseball team of El Paso, Texas is named Chihuahuas. So, that was everything that the American Kennel Club had to say about the Chihuahua in that specific article. like it when his paws get touched, his front paws only. He's fine with the back ones getting touched. 
So now I am on betterpet.com. Let's see if there's anything interesting on here. It says that there are multiple theories on the origins of the Chihuahua. The most commonly accepted country of origin for these small dogs is Mexico, but some believe they're from Malta. I don't think they're from Malta. Everybody, everybody knows that Chihuahuas are from Mexico. Their ancestors were probably mute. The Chihuahua likely evolved from a slightly larger and significantly quieter breed known as the Tichichi. The Chihuahua has stood the test of time. The smallest dog breed has survived the fall of two ancient civilizations and made its way onto many famous name slaps. Sage has the most fluffiest hair. Look at this hair. Look at this. Look at this. Are you guys, can you guys tell how thick that is? Chihuahuas are known for their spunky, vocal personalities, but their precise story is a well-kept secret lost to time. There's some debate on the origin of the Chihuahua. Generally, it's believed the dogs, one of the oldest breeds still around today, originated in Mexico with the Mayans, Toltens, and Aztecs. But other claims include Egypt, Malta, and China. Malta, Malta. Eight hundred to eleven sixty eight Toltec origins. While we don't know it as an absolute fact, the Tachichi is most the most commonly accepted predecessor to the Chihuahua. What's the difference? The now extinct Tachichi was also a small size, but likely larger than the Chihuahua. And the Tachichis were mute. The breed, revered in ancient civilizations, also had the Chihuahua's large ears and apple head. The Tachichi dog was likely bred by the Toltecs starting around the 19th century. The Toltecs believed Tachichi dogs had magical powers and were sacrificed in religious ceremonies after their owners died so they could guide them to the afterlife. 1169 to 1521, Aztecs and Chihuahuas. The Aztecs conquered the Toltecs. The Tichichi continued to inspire. Like the Toltecs, the Aztecs believed the Tichichi dog was more than a companion pet. Why were Chihuahuas bred? Several reasons, including food. In Aztec culture, these dogs had mystical powers. My mouth is really dry. They performed rituals with them, believing that the Chihuahua spirit could guide a dead noble spirit through the afterlife. The human spirit could get across a river during the afterlife, they'd crawl on the Chihuahua's back, who would then help them reach their heavenly destination. Nobility may have kept packs of hundreds of these small dogs. The Aztec people are largely credited with developing the lighter, spunky, apple-headed toy dogs we know today as Chihuahuas. Historical experts believe that Tachichis were bred with the Mexican hairless dog breed, the Jolo Tzquintli, to produce Chihuahuas. Speaking of hairless dogs, there's yet another theory that the Chihuahua calls the Chinese hairless dog, the Chinese crested, an ancestor. Again. It's lost to time. What we do know is that the Aztecs tre treasured Tachichis and later dogs that became known as Chihuahuas. I'm going to skip. Um, actually, I guess not. I, I'll, I'll read it. 1521 to 1799, European influence. In 1519, conquistador Hernan Cortez arrived in what is known today as Mexico, hoping to find gold. Ultimately, they took the land from the Aztecs who surrendered it to the Spanish on August 13, 1521. 
There's some speculation that the conquistadors brought the chihuahua from the island of Malta in the Mediterranean. Another small dog on the island has a soft spot on their skull known as a malera. A famous work of art supports this second theory, the 1482 painting. Scenes from the life of Moses at the Sistine Champ Chapel. In it, there's a small white dog in the lower left that bears a striking resemblance to a chihuahua. There's a helicopter flying overhead. Therefore, there's a theory that the European Maltese pocket dog may be another Chihuahua ancestor. Chihuahuas in the Modern Age The modern Chihuahua is a popular pet in many parts of the world, including the United States. The modern-day Chihuahua was discovered in Central and South America in the mid to late 1800s. Chihuahua is a long name for tiny dog. The small dog name from Chihuahua, Mexico, is considered the main point of origin. There, Mexican merchants bred and sold the pups to American tourists, which is how the smallest dog breed made its way to the U.S. soil. Americans kept the tiny dogs as pets. The breed gained American Kennel Club recognition in 1904. Bleppy became the first Chihuahua registered with the AKC in 1908. Chihuahua comes in two varieties based on coat types, smooth and long. Other variations, including the Chihuini, a Dachshund and Chihuahua hybrid, and Teacup Chihuahua, a supposedly smaller version of the Chihuahua, are not recognized by the AKC. A Chihuahua is just a Chihuahua, states the Chihuahua Club of America. The Chihuahua has drawn a bright spotlight in recent times, appearing in flicks like Legally Blonde and becoming a beloved breed among the likes of Paris Hilton, Madonna, and Britney Spears. The dogs are popular abroad too, including in Belgium, where they are often a target of thieves. So, that is actually... It seems like pretty a pretty good amount of information on chihuahuas what do you think sage what are chihuahuas known for chihuahuas are loving affectionate dogs that often get attached to one person they're vocal and may not always enjoy the company of young children or other dogs they do well in city apartments and rural areas though they are subject to some health conditions they gen generally can live long, healthy lives. So, what do you guys think of chihuahuas? What do you guys think of chihuahuas? Personally, I love my chihuahua. I think chihuahuas are great. They're awesome. I relate to them on a spiritual level. I'm going to blow out this candle now because I think it's been going for long enough and I don't want it to irritate Sage, 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 because if you guys did not know, candles are not very good for dogs. It's harmless if they're not on all the time, obviously, but if you can help it, be aware, be aware, be aware. So, I hope that you guys enjoyed that. I hope that you guys enjoyed that. It gave you some kind of sense of relaxation or focus. Whatever you were trying to achieve by watching Chihuahua Dog ASMR. Thank you for watching. 
Thank you for watching. Sincerely, CGAG. And as always, we will see you guys in the next video.